over here. <laughs> they said I'd take her into the shops, and this is, uh... You were tempted, though, for a second? Not really. You were tempted. I tempted you. This is Normal People, the Hulu show from Sally Rooney and Alice Birch based on Rooney's novel of the same title. It follows the intensely emotional relationship and friendship of Marianne and Connell, two Irish students throughout the end of high school and into college. It's also one of my favorite shows of the year. That's because while it's incredibly simple in its premise, it brings the small nuances and subtleties of their emotions into living color. Making a TV show about the relationship between two characters is really hard. It's why you so often see the same patterns emerge. Following a will-they-won't-they they formula is a useful tool for mapping emotions onto a story. But in normal people, those emotions are the story. Because of that, it makes sense that this was a novel first. A novel's author can place you directly into a character's brain, describing the thoughts and emotions they feel in great detail, for pages on end if they want to. But without a narrator, film and TV have a much harder time conveying that experience to their audience. So how does normal people pull off the difficult challenge of visually describing nuanced feelings without those literary tools? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. One of the distinct advantages of film and specifically TV, a tool that can show us deeply personal and interior stories, the camera. Normal people uses its camera to create intimacy, pulling us into its central relationship, exploring the interiority of its main characters, and illustrating a connection that feels like fate. God, my say it was you that was seducing me. I was trying to. <laughs> Don't worry, there won't be any major spoilers for the series. I'll be focusing on the early episodes for big examples, although everything I talk about applies to the entire series. Also, there's a lot of sex in the show, and while YouTube is going to keep it PG, you know, just heads up. I'm Jackson, and this is Skip Intro. It wouldn't be fair if I started this video without talking about the other huge advantage TV and film have. They give characters human avatars. And a lot of people have already praised the borderline magical chemistry Daisy Edgar Jones and Paul Mescal have. They are the most important part of the show, full stop. But don't underestimate the camera. It does a lot of sneaky work to highlight the best parts of their performances and strengthen that intimate chemistry. The first and most obvious way is through the camera's shallow depth of field. Depth of field is the amount of distance from the camera that is in focus. So a shallow depth of field means that just a small slice of space is sharp, while everything behind and in front of that slice is blurred. Shallow depth of field shots have a bit of a bad rap, since it's the first technique any film student with a DSLR tries out. But like any tool or technique, it has its place. And one of the most effective places for it is in illustrating intimacy. That intimacy can be physical, and in these moments, that shallow depth of field can bring us close enough to see small details that only they can. Things like Connell's breath lightly stirring Marianne's hair. Would you say your feelings are involved? Obviously. These details give scenes a tangible quality. You can feel the softness of each intimate moment. Maybe it's just the social distancing talking, but these moments invite you in as a viewer. Close enough to almost feel like you're being held too. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm a little lonely. Well, I got a lot out of it. But this razor-thin depth of field shows emotional intimacy too. The world around Connell and Marion dissolves, letting the two fill each other's worlds. This isn't just reserved for the scenes in which they get hot and heavy, of which there are more than a few. Their conversations often feature similar shots, the camera inching closer and closer as they talk more and more personally. Maybe it's because you blush a lot when she talks to you? But you know, you, you blush at everything. Thanks. Guess you have one of those complexions. Great. <laughs> You're blushing right now, actually. Yeah, I'm aware. The camera builds a tone, a vibe. And that's the root of the story much more so than the logical chain of events, or even the dialogue. Even when we see actual words as Connell writes what he feels in his journal, the camera's lens blur prevents us from reading those words. We're left only to experience that he's writing just to be present with him in that moment. After all, words are just a translation of his thoughts, and the camera can provide its own translation. And as the show combines shallow depth of field with soft, diffused lighting and largely handheld camera work, it communicates an intimate closeness on an even deeper level, making its shots feel delicate, almost handcrafted. When the camera shifts that shallow depth of field over its subject, 
It imitates how our eyes adjust at close range, noticing the details that make something or someone unique. And that uniqueness is at the heart of the story of normal people. Marion and Connell are both outsiders, and the way the show places its actors in the frame puts them on the outskirts of a group. You know, I, I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. In bed, you mean? Yeah. And afterwards, but... I don't know, maybe that's normal. It's not. Marion and Connell have never felt totally comfortable in their own skin. In high school, Connell is incredibly popular, but his friends just don't quite get him. Marion is bullied both at school and at home, her strong, independent voice not always de-escalating the situation. I wasn't aware my eyeline fell under the jurisdiction of school rules. Here we go. Tried to impress your classmates. <laughs> they don't look too impressed to me. I'm pretty sure I was just looking out the window. When they get to college, Connell struggles to find his people. And while Marion's intellect is revered, she still isn't seen for who she is deep down. And Marianne absolutely annihilated him. It's like a cat playing with food. <laughs> I bet it was. I mean, no, it wasn't. Intimacy isn't just about wanting to be physically close to another person or becoming infatuated with them. It's about fully seeing and fully being seen, something that they've only truly found in each other. So as important as it is for the camera to show their closeness, it's just as important to show the absence of that connection in their relationships with other people. Marianne and Connell are often placed in the frame in a way that draws some separation between them and their environment, divided from their peers and from their work. They're often shot from behind as they walk, silhouetted against the rest of their world. When others join them, we change angles. I'm having people over Friday, after the match. Come celebrate, or dry on your sorrows, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, sounds good. And when the interaction ends, the camera returns to a shot from behind. It's not that they don't like or talk to other people, it's that even when they do, they still feel alone, unseen. But over and over again, the camera shows us how they can meet each other in that space. Sometimes they are both framed from behind together. Other times they stand out in their ability to make eye contact. They literally see each other. In wider shots, the two are often framed within the frame, together in their own special little world. The difference between their interior world and the one around them is visible when they talk to other people. The camera lingers on their faces, a sea of people and comments washing over them, rather than interacting with them. It's been there about a year now, I'd say. How'd you hear that? Alan was telling me, you know her brother? Yeah. Have you ever been in there yourself? Into the mansion? Uh, I've been in there a few times, all right, yeah. What's it like inside? Oh, uh, well, it's big, obviously. But when Connell and Marion talk to each other, the camera shows them both composing shots so that their eyes meet. Take this scene from the second episode where they talk about college. You should change to English. Do you actually mean that or are you joking? No, I, I actually think you should. It's, it's the only subject you really enjoy and you spend all your spare time reading. There are only five different shots in the scene and for the most part, they're symmetrical. You can even draw a line from Connell and Marion's eyes meeting in the middle. Except there's one shot that breaks that symmetry, Connell being shot from the side. And it comes with this line. I bet you'd pretend not to know me if we bumped into each other. It's a moment of nakedness, of vulnerability, of fear of rejection. Marion is the first person to see Connell's passion for English and accept him for it. And rejection from her in that world would mean a rejection of his inner self. I bet you'd pretend not to know me if we bumped into each other. Sorry. I would never pretend to not know you, Connell. Marion doesn't reject him, and the camera reframes around those symmetrical shots. Contrast this to another scene where they fight, and you can see how the camera keeps that symmetry broken. Like we're just friends. No, that's, that's different. Even as we're treated to those same tight shots, their eyes just don't quite meet the way they did just an episode earlier. The camera shows us how they aren't seeing eye to eye while still maintaining that sense of intimacy. That's because those shallow depth of field shots are reserved for Marianne and Connell, juxtaposed by wider, deeper shots of others. The message is clear. They don't have this kind of relationship with anyone else. And the camera is always drawing lines connecting the two of them in ways that they can't connect to others. 
They're framed in each other's silhouette, or so their eyes meet even when they're in different locations. In groups, it pushes in on them, getting closer and closer until the world around them disappears. Even when they are apart, there's a piece of them with each other. These lines of connection are maybe most apparent in the very first episode. Do your friends know you read so much? Yeah, they wouldn't really be interested in all that stuff. Marion sees Connell in a way his friends don't. And as they get closer and closer and eventually kiss, the camera keys in on him nervously fidgeting with the book. He's not nervous to kiss Marion. He's nervous because he's vulnerable. And the camera lingers on the final shot, Marion sitting down framed by the book in the foreground, a symbol of his true self. These are all incredibly subtle choices, and you might not notice them at first, but they accumulate. They add up to create something rich in detail, and that detail is what makes all the difference. TV gives us a deep perspective into characters. We live with them as they move through life. We see their mistakes, their darkest moments, and their happiest memories. Normal People is a story about young people feeling things for the first time. Connell and Marion might be infuriating at times, but I think many of us have found ourselves on both sides of their relationship at some point or another. The show might be moody and melodramatic, but the camera invites us in close, giving us six hours of intimate connection with two characters, often spent just inches from their faces. In that closeness, you can't help but notice subtle nuance. It's in the space between those details that normal people reaches greatness to not fall into conventional tropes, but to make the feeling of love unique to these two characters. From a thousand feet, every love story might fall into just a handful of buckets, but Normal People uses the camera to build an intimacy that extends beyond romance, to focus on capturing the closeness that makes every relationship so powerful, personal, and unique. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, subscribe, tell your friends, I don't know, whatever. I know it might seem like I've been gone for a little bit, but I've actually been making a lot of video essays for The Ringer over on their YouTube channel. Um, I've made a couple about Better Call Saul, Ozark, Killing Eve, and most recently Tiger King. So I'll put the link to those in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks again.